Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 13th, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. I woke up a few minutes early and couldn't fall back asleep, so I went out to Braddock Bay Park and got there around 5.25 a.m. just as it was getting light. My plan was to start at Braddock Bay Park and hopefully find the lark bunting and get word out right away, but unfortunately it seemed like the lark bunting left, so it was not seen today. I spent some time looking from the platform and then Kim and I headed out onto the boardwalk. We had this merlin fly over really early, but it was heading west and looked like it was hunting, so it was not counted as a migrant. This marsh wren gave us great looks off the end of the boardwalk, and I just love when they do these little splits on the cattails. And he was perched up singing for us. And wrens are kind of funny with the way they look around. They got those short stubby tails. Here's a great blue heron that flew by. We had an absolutely stunning view of this American bittern that flew past the boardwalk. And I especially like the feet. I mean, check out those claws. Here we have a fresh southern juvenile bald eagle. You can see it's in really fresh plumage with a dark head and body. And the juveniles have an even trailing edge to the wing since all of the feathers are the same age. And they usually have a lot of white in this wing pit area. Here's a barn swallow perched on the railing of the boardwalk. You can see overall blue on top, a bit of red on the forehead and throat, and then mostly whitish underneath. Really long wings that fold back here, and the long forked tail sticks out even beyond those long wings. And here's a different barn swallow that was sitting there a few feet away. We briefly went up on the platform again to scan for the lark bunting. Still no luck on that, but we did have this savannah sparrow perch nicely for us. After that, we walked around the park a bit, and we had our first eastern wood peewees of the season. Peewees are flycatchers, which can be notoriously difficult to identify by sight, but on these peewees you notice kind of a dusky vest. And the easier way to identify them is by call. So learn the, the calls or the songs of the flycatchers, then you'll have a much easier time. Here's a northern perula. We had some nice looks at Cape May warblers. Here's a male orchard oriole in flight. You can see that chestnut brown color rather than the bright orange that the Baltimore orioles show. Here's a bobolink, but it's not that adult male plumage that we're so used to seeing. This is either a female or an immature plumage. And we've made it back up on the platform in time to do the hawk watch. And you can see it was kind of a sunny day with a high layer of cirrus clouds. And winds were light, maybe sometimes moderate out of the northeast. They were a little stronger in the morning. And then by the afternoon, it had really warmed up. And those winds had mostly died off. Here's another fresh juvenile southern bald eagle. So again, these are birds that are born south of us over the winter that are migrating north in the spring. Here's a sharp-shinned hawk that's missing a few feathers there on the left wing. Remember, sharpies have kind of small heads, more compact looking than the more lanky Cooper's hawks. Bit of a thicker streaking on the underside. It's a juvenile, so it's got this vertical streaking. And the tail looks more squared off at the tip because all of the tail feathers are about the same length. Compare that to this adult Cooper's hawk, which has a bigger head and orange barring underneath that indicates it's an adult. You can see it's carrying prey, and it has a full crop from eating. Here's an osprey carrying a pretty good-sized fish, and if you know what kind of fish it is, please leave a comment down below. Here's a juvenile red-tailed hawk, and the juveniles usually look really pale because they don't have that dark trailing edge to the wing that the adults have. We can see that it looks like it's maybe growing in a feather on each wing. I guess that's what this darker patch is here. And... Uh, you can see the dark patagial bars and belly bands that both ages of red tail show, both adults and juveniles. And we can see this more banded or barred tail that the juveniles show rather than the red tail of the adults. Today I was participating in the World Series of Birding as part of the Montclair Broadwings team. So it was fitting that we had a few broad wings. I was a little nervous with the winds that we wouldn't get very many, which we only had a small handful but this juvenile broadwing gave us a nice look as it came overhead. And this adult broadwinged hawk followed closely behind. You can see in the glide posture, they have a straight trailing edge to the wing, 
kind of a rounded front to the wing. Small compact beautio with brown barring underneath and a dark tail with a white band on it. And our team is not only to raise money for New Jersey Audubon and the Montclair Hawkwatch, but also in memory of Elsa Greenstone. And I know Elsa loved Broadwings and she would, really would have liked seeing these too. And to reflect back on my time as counter at the Montclair Hawkwatch, we ordered a pizza for lunch. And I don't need to go into the whole story now, but it involves me, a pizza, and a dog that wanted the pizza more than I wanted it. It was a nice surprise to see an American black duck mixed in with a small group of mallards that flew overhead. On black ducks, you get a strong contrast between the dark body and the white underwings. And I got the report of a female golden-winged warbler over on the other side of the bay, near the Owl Woods parking lot. And I kept seeing reports of it, and then Kim went over and saw it. And finally, I uh, kind of hinted that I would also like to see it. So she covered the watch while I ran over there quick to see this female golden-winged warbler. It's a species I don't see too often, and I was able to get some pretty good photos of it, so really happy to go over and get that on an otherwise slow hawk migration day. And here's the same female golden-winged warbler in flight, and you can see that yellow on the top of the head as well as the bit of yellow in the wings. Here we have a turkey vulture, and we had a pretty steady flight of turkey vultures throughout the day. You know, occasional groups of 10, 20, maybe up to 30 at a time. So it was slow a lot of the day, but especially towards the end of the day as the winds died off, we started to get some more groups of turkey vultures um, gathering and gliding high overhead. Here's a bird that was down on the path feeding with some white-crowned sparrows. And at first I got excited because I thought it was some rare sparrow that I couldn't recognize, but then I realized it was just a female indigo bunting. Taking a look at the eBird list, we birded a lot of hours at Braddock Bay Park and ended up with 96 species for the day there. So really good total. We're hoping for 100, but we got pretty close, so we're not going to complain about that, especially since it was kind of a slow migration day. And I just put in an incomplete checklist for the run over to see the Golden Winged Warbler. And if we take a look at how our World Series of Birding Montclair Broadwings team is doing, you can see that combined, we have a total of 290 species that were seen today, 106 checklists. So you can see the pins on the map here show where the different birders are located. So most of them up here in the mid-Atlantic or northeast United States, a few farther west, and then some also in the UK. And our team has raised over $9,400. And if you'd like to donate, I'll put a link in the description. I see some friends of mine have donated, including Sharon Lynn and Lisa Smith. So thank you to everyone who has donated. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, we see that today we had 232 turkey vultures, one osprey, six bald eagles, two northern harriers, three sharp-shinned hawks, five broad-winged hawks, five red-tailed hawks, and two American kestrels for a total of 256 migrant raptors today. That brings our May total to 8,324 and the season total to 45,149 migrant raptors. The new species for the season today were Eastern Wood Peewee, Red-Eyed Vireo, and Golden-Winged Warbler. And taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking mainly cloudy with the high in the upper 50s, winds north at 10 to 15 miles per hour, and it looks like those winds will be stronger in the morning and then weaken as the day goes on but it's still a mostly unfavorable wind so would only expect light maybe moderate migration for mother's day for monday it's looking sunny with a high around 70 and winds westerly at 10 to 20 miles per hour so some stronger winds there and i think they're maybe starting out southwest in the early morning and then shifting more west or west northwest but overall it's a decent wind it's been a while since we've had winds that strong so It'll be interesting to see what we get. Expect moderate migration. And for Tuesday, partly cloudy, then increasing clouds with periods of rain later on in the day. High in the low to mid 70s. And again, fairly strong westerly winds that may be even more favorable in the morning. So we'll keep an eye on Tuesday as a potential good day. Right now I'm saying expect moderate migration, but could change to good migration. All right, well, it was a really pleasant day birding around Braddock Bay Park. 
not as much chaos as yesterday when we had all the lark bunting madness and uh, tons and tons of people out. A little bit more of a slow day today, but it's May and you never know what you're going to see. And getting the chance to go over and see that golden winged warbler was really a nice highlight of the day. There's a lot more good migration days to come, both for warblers and hawks, hopefully. So I hope to see you out soon at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.